okay so here is an uh, introduction video uh, to SharePoint framework so you will basically see why a SharePoint framework come into picture and uh, what are the various different uh, models are there in uh, in our SharePoint so what are the basically the uh, uh, the development models that uh, uh, that Sher or Microsoft already provided to us so uh, first thing is uh, let's see uh, what are the various different uh, SharePoint development models are there uh, in terms of uh, that Microsoft released from uh, time to time let's say from various version to next version so there are different model development models that come up now uh, in this first thing is the SharePoint uh, farm solution so as we know already um, if you are working on SharePoint on premises any version then you must have been work on this uh, which are known as the farm solution so farm solution or these are known as your full trust solution so which basically run on dotnet framework why I'm saying this on dotnet framework we will get to know when uh, we will discuss about really the SharePoint framework uh, introduction now then also it will run on the context of uh, your SharePoint farm administrator and it will have full access to the SharePoint uh, environment that means you will be able to um, you will be able to do all these things whatever a SharePoint farm administrator can do in that particular uh, SharePoint uh, uh, code and uh, the, de the deployment model so here the deployment model is uh, WC files and features so we usually deploy by using that and uh, next thing is uh, next thing is if we'll see uh, we cannot it cannot be hosted onto the SharePoint online uh, or Office 365 environment so because it's a server side code we already know about that thing uh, that uh, we cannot run a server side code in in our SharePoint online Office 365 environment now the scope it can be farm label it can be web application label it can be site collection label it can be site label that means uh, if you if you make your scope to site collection label then uh, then the solution can be uh, effective from that particular site collection label so and you can uh, uh, by using this code you can write uh, your server side uh, code web parts or visual web parts then time of jobs event receivers feature receivers so these are the code that we can uh, write by using our server side code or the farm solution but these things are not possible on spfx so you as of now uh, you will not be able to develop this kind of things we will see what are the things basically you can develop also and uh, to overcome these things so uh, because since the code is running on the SharePoint server so main disadvantages is that your stability of the farm and uh, that region Microsoft come up with a solution known as sandbox solution where it will be specific to a site collection so the scope will be uh, the site collection rather than the web application and uh, then sandbox solution uh, again as i said it will be only effective only on that site collection where you have installed and activate the solution they cannot be activated to a web application level scope or farm level scope we can still use sandbox solution to uh, provision some declarative solutions such as site columns content type so where it will be an xml file you will add those things so these are the declarative approach and you can create or develop list template instance like this now apart from uh, this uh, if you'll see next whatever the version uh, come up is uh, is the SharePoint apps or add-in model uh, where you can uh, develop uh, Microsoft basically come up with a solution where the code will run not in the SharePoint server it will be outside your SharePoint so the add-in model came and uh, here you can develop two types of add-ins or apps uh, it is known as SharePoint hosted app and then provided hosted app so in SharePoint hosted app you have your JSON code or any logic you want to implement you have to go through your JavaScript code and uh, if you want to use um, if you want to use any kind of uh, server side code you will not be able to add it so it is not at all possible on that and similarly if you'll see there are uh, uh, there is provided hosted app where uh, you can write the code uh, on uh, on by using csop so you can use microsoft.sharepoint.client dll and microsoft.sharepoint.client.runtime dll and you will be able to use that csum code over there in this provided hosted app 
now you can also host as i said before you can host it outside of our sharepoint server sometimes people in you know, people uh, host it in in their own premises server sometimes in azure also they used to save uh, they used to deploy it and uh, but even if you you will develop a web part let's say you will de develop a web parts which is your default.hpx page and but it will be uh, when you will add into the page it will be kind of a iframe so it will be available on iframe and uh, for deployment you can make it a package and you will put it in your sharepoint app catalog site and then uh, uh, then you can uh, access or you can add into any site collection wherever you want so the app scope is your tenant but the functionality is scope to the particular site where you are installing that so since it's a uh, uh, since it's in iframe so iframes are also slower than your uh, microsoft uh, uh, sorry your script editor web part so let's see you are pay, you are adding a script editor web part which we'll discuss in this javascript injection next but you will see here you can uh, it will be little slower than script editor walls also and iframe has stronger security which can be useful for the end users that means the control has no access to their connection to office 365 so next what we have uh, also we have uh, parallelly we have also your javascript injection where you can inject a javascript or your code this is very popular uh, among the customization that we used to do so you can inject the code directly by using a script editor web part or a content editor web part Previously, content editor web part was there in SharePoint 2010 and then in SharePoint 2013, SharePoint Online and all of our other versions, we, they come up with a new thing which is known as your script editor web part where you can add your script into that. So you can directly inject into the page. So you can customize the page by injecting some JavaScript code in, inside that or you can have a content editor web part also you can inject over there and you can uh, use json code you can use rest api code you can use html all these things you can use on that so it's very easy uh, to write you don't need a special editor for that you can just open any text editor whether, whether you, in fact you can use your text editor like notepad or what plus plus what what pad like this or notepad plus plus you can use so this kind of editor you can write but since uh, the customization are a scope to a particular page then there is no packaging methods are available that means you have to uh, copy that code and you have to add it in your uh, destination environment wherever we we you want to uh, update it but this kind of script injecting a lot of organizations restrict it because script injection they will not allow you so next if we'll see here uh, there is a sharepoint framework so uh, how it is uh, different from various uh, uh, development models that we uh, discussed previously. So SharePoint framework customization execute within uh, the client. So it is fully script based and it is not compiled. So you can run it. It can run on the context of your uh, SharePoint page. So there is no more iframe concept also. And uh, there is only one way to customize your SharePoint modern pages. If you if you have aware of that thing, that SharePoint modern experience is already there, and now we can start developing. Or a lot of organization already started using your SharePoint modern experience. So this is the only way that you can customize a page by using SPFX or SharePoint framework. And these are fully responsive and it is mobile friendly so remember you do not you you can open the site on any devices desktop laptop tablet mobile devices anywhere it is fully responsive and the same way you can upload into the tenants app catalog site and it will be available to any site in within the tenant so you can add that and most importantly if you'll see this is a this is this is this can be available from from your sharepoint on premises as well as sharepoint online so your sharepoint uh, on premises 2016 uh, so uh, feature pack 2 and sharepoint 2019 as well as sharepoint online so everywhere it is supported and uh, it's basically a sharepoint framework if i'll go by definition sharepoint framework or spfx is a web part page model or a page and SharePoint framework is uh, where you can have a smooth integration with SharePoint data with various open source tooling. So uh, it will be having full access or full support for the client side SharePoint development. So when I said uh, various uh, or open source tooling, we will see uh, what are the tools basically you should know or what are the uh, um, what are the things that you should aware of uh, the SharePoint framework development. So 
in the next video we will uh, discuss about the sharepoint framework tool chain so i'll explain you what are the what are the tool chain or what are the tools and languages that you should use or what are the uh, open source things that you should learn uh, before uh, starting your sharepoint framework development but few of the key features of sharepoint so like there is no iframe customization in the sharepoint framework that means javascript it will be embedded directly into the page and also sharepoint framework runs in the context of current user and connection in the browser and uh, sharepoint framework controls are responsible by default so as i said before and uh, performance of sharepoint framework is, is reliable and you can use uh, various uh, javascript frameworks i will discuss those things in the next uh, chapter and uh, end user also can use the sharepoint framework that are approved by the tenant administrator so they will be able to use that so and most importantly we can use it is in both your classic sharepoint pages and modern sharepoint pages so next video we will discuss about the uh, tool uh, chain so we will see bas basically various what are the various tools that uh, microsoft provides to work with your sharepoint de framework development